But we begin with Scientology. Most of us, to be frank, know a little more about it than the identity of its celebrity followers. Tom Cruise and John Travolta foremost amongst them. But tonight we talk to a New Zealander whose whistleblowing about the church has made it all the way to the Australian Parliament, a man who's been on the inside of Scientology and claims to have seen abuse, including coerced abortions. This man left Scientology in 2006, ashamed of what he'd seen and of his role in it. Today he went to confront the head of Scientology in New Zealand for his response to his allegations. Melissa Davies reports. I'm a Scientologist. She's a beaut, eh? What we are seeing is a worldwide pattern of abuse and criminality. The church known for its famous followers <laughs> now faces infamy. Australian Senator Nick Xenophon is leading calls for an inquiry since he was contacted by former church members. Aaron Saxton is one of the victims of Scientology who wrote to me. He was born into the organisation and rose to a position of influence in Sydney and the United States. But what most people don't know is Aaron Saxton is a New Zealander. Back home, he says, to encourage the New Zealand Church of Scientology to come clean. No, no, I'm asking where you're from. From TV3. OK, no, no response. Sorry. Well, now, um, to Aaron. Well, there's no. some pretty interesting responses to my allegations in Sydney. Oh, that's good. I think uh, you'd like to comment on that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, make an appointment to see me and I'll come in on it, OK? For, uh, for but Scientology spokesman Mike Ferris did have more to say. No, no, no. But first, Aaron's allegations about his time in the C organisation, Scientology's senior management. He says while under control of Scientology, he was involved in coercing female followers to have abortions. And the conversation would go something pretty much along these lines. You know, you're, you're, you're violating the purpose of the Sea Org, OK? You are, you are off purpose, you're here to do a job, we don't have time, we, we have to save planet Earth, and you're trying off, going off having children. This is at cross purposes. Ex-Scientologist Jenny Long says she was one of many women asked to have an abortion while she was working for the church in Sydney. When I got pregnant with my son, my senior said to me, you haven't, well, CSW is completed staff work. When you do anything that's out of the ordinary, you have to put in a written um, a, um, oh, request. Okay, so um, when you when you have a baby, you have to put in a written request to have a baby, and I hadn't. And so she said, because you haven't done a CSW, I can authorise you to have an abortion. You can be made to have an abortion. Regarding the abortions over in Sydney, would you like to talk about that? You said that you wanted to investigate No, no, I understand, claim. Aaron, like information that you spot. claim you got women to abort. I've Who never heard of that before. Who claimed it? You claimed that you so, had women to abort. So I've never heard about, of that before, you know Aaron. I'm a liar? Aaron, who worked in both the Sydney and Los Angeles church offices, says personal files detailing counselling sessions were accessed by staff and senior management called the Sea Org. I can tell you right now, if the, if the likes of John Travolta, uh, Kirstie Alley, Jenna Alfman or Leah Romini think for one second that their files haven't been read by other members of the Sea Org, I can assure them right now there are a number of Sea Org members that have nothing to do with counselling that have read their files extensively. Anyone seen to be against the views of Scientology can be declared a disconnected person, meaning all Scientologists must never communicate with them. A practice condemned by a 1969 New Zealand government report into Scientology. It said Scientology should not reintroduce the practice of disconnection and also says if this change had been reversed or some of the old and objectionable practices revived, the government should take note and consider what steps necessary. But Jenny, a Scientology member for seven years, says the church has reintroduced disconnection. I have a 1998, I think, letter signed by one of the Ferrises um, declaring some Scientologists because they had left the C organisation without going through the proper channels. I ordered some. I ordered the very disconnection of several people here in New Zealand. I asked Mike Ferris of the Church of Scientology here to execute those orders, either via the Office of Special Affairs or directly to order those disconnections. Those disconnections included my own mother, my own sister, 
I ordered them disconnected from me. What concerns do you have about Aaron's allegations? He's a nutter, OK? Why is that? He's a, he's a consummate liar. He claims all kinds of things. He tried to extort $75,000 out of us How do you know by building a website. Mike, are you aware of the allegations I made? That's do a you? question for you. Yeah, I've read your letter. That. You read my letter? The Church of Scientology in Australia put out a letter of their own in response to Nick Xenophon's allegations. In it, they call Aaron Saxton a mean, hateful young man who carried a knife and dangerous spikes. Aaron says it's true he was a bully, but says he was promoted because of it. So you're, you're not disputing what they say about you here? Absolutely not. Are you a chronic liar? Well, for the church I am, yes. Back then, I was a chronic liar for the church. The church in Australia and New Zealand is registered as a charity, so it does not have to pay tax. It's a really grey area deciding what is or what isn't a cult because most of us would look at what we believe and say, well, that's perfectly reasonable. It's people who don't believe. Psychology lecturer Mark Wilson has studied Scientology and says the non-traditional belief system does lean towards a cult rather than a church, but that has no bearing on its tax-free status. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it, it meets the same requirements for tax-free status as a charity as, as any number of other organisations do. And it's important to make the distinction between the organisation and the individual members. It doesn't mean that Scientologists don't have to pay tax, for example. So in that regard, they're working well within the rules. Well, Nick Xenophon, under par parliamentary privilege, made some very outrageous um, allegations. Australia's Scientology spokeswoman Virginia Stewart says Xenophon's informants are unreliable. I completely think that he is wrong. I know he is wrong. And actually, uh, very uh, eminent scholars and uh, legal teams have studied Scientology in full and have come to completely different conclusions to Senator Xenophon. We have been asking Mike Ferris for a response to Jenny and Aaron's allegations since Tuesday, but this morning Aaron demanded answers. Are you happy? Is there anything else you'd like to respond to? I'd like to say bravo, TV3. They did a fine ambush, they got me on camera. There are no limits on what you can believe, but there are limits on how you can behave. It's called the law and no one is above it. Thanks for answering all those allegations and making a Who great public relations statement. Who flew you over here, Aaron? I did. Fly back. Bye, Mike. Minister Davies reporting. We continue to ask Mike Ferris for an interview today, but he refused to appear on camera. However, this afternoon he did release a statement responding to some of Aaron's allegations. He says there are no forced abortions in Scientology, and if Aaron Saxton or anyone else coerced someone into having an abortion, they are way outside the church's policy and ethical conduct. He also said, should the person want to rejoin the group, this is about disconnections, should the person want to rejoin the group, then the door is always open. You can read his full statement on our website, and the offer does remain open for Mr. Ferris to appear live on our program.